We're going out and about today in this lovely Bluebirds Blue new MG from Nathaniel Cars, one of the Cardiff City partners. We're going to be catching up with Cardiff City women's player Fionn Price on the way to training. Right, here we go. Fionn, thanks for joining us today. No problem, thanks for having me. I say us because my dog Brian is in the back. Ah, oh, Brian! <laughs> Hi! Nice to meet you. Just chilling. All right, let's give it okay, a go. Okay, good to go. I'm ready when you are. Let's go. Like an electric automatic oh, car. Very nice. Do you have a bit of music? Yeah. But we've got some got some of your favourite tunes to play for us. Go on then. We'll start off with we'll the music. Check this one, we? Do you know this one? It's a good song. Great Very song, good song. Old school. Classic. So obviously we're in the new MG from Nathaniel Cars. Just explain a little bit the relationship with Nathaniel Cars and what they do to sort of support women in sport. Oh, they've been fantastic for us, you know, to set that platform and they've been brilliant supporting us with our kits, our playing kits. So they're our sponsor of our home and away kit. Um, and without them, we wouldn't be able to have half the things we do have. So we are very grateful and their support is second to none, really. Brilliant. Well, we're just leaving uh, Cardiff City Stadium. You have played there a few times. What's it like playing there? Um, unbelievable. I mean, people who know me know I'm a massive City fan. Uh, Bluebirds. <laughs> um, so yeah, playing for the team you support is just indescribable. Really, it was a great feeling. I mean, the pitch is massive, but yeah, yeah intimidating. Um, a little bit, but it was great seeing you know family in the stands cheering you on playing. I mean, you can only dream of playing in your hometown club so yeah it's great one of the big influences in your life and on we can see on your socials oh. is that you love coffee it's actually made my day this <laughs> so we're gonna grab a coffee what are we getting for brian i know brian should have a puppuccino yeah do really. you think they got puppuccino they might do although it might make a bit of a mess in the car oh. <laughs> you, might, yeah. you might have to skip that brian, Are you, brian? <laughs> can you have a caramel macchiato macchiato yeah we're fine uh we'll go small we'll go a straight. small I mean, normally I get a cake, but... Yeah, I would normally. We'll skip that one. I'm with an athlete, so I'm being yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'd normally have a granola bar. That's exactly what I was asking. That's it. <laughs> I've got a difficult question. Okay. If you had to give up one forever, would you give up coffee mm. or Crocs? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, that's criminal. Hard question. I mean, <laughs> that is really hard. You're even struggling to give an answer. I am. That is so hard. I mean, I've just bought fluffy Crocs. Have you? Surely that defeats the purpose of the Crocs. Well, right it's now? winter now, so okay, I thought, yeah. you know. Mm. A bit like slippers. Do you wear them outdoors, though? I wore them to my um, school's inset, which is like our teachers' meeting. Okay. And I was, you know, showing them to everyone because they know how much I love the Crocs. <laughs> how many pairs um, do you own? About eight. <laughs> I just love them. Crocs or coffee? Now, yeah, I'm going to say coffee answer. because it's actually tattooed on my ankle, so I'll go coffee. If Crocs okay. sponsor me, <laughs> then we could change our mind. If coffee sponsors me, then, you know, but there's real love for both, you know? Yeah, there you Thank go. Thank you. Right. For those out there, if you haven't tried a caramel macchiato. So now you've got your coffee, you're set. I'm ready to go now. You're set. Fire away. We're going to head towards Tremorfa, oh. which is... Where are you from? It is, where I grew up. What, how long did you live there for? Um, 12 years. Okay. So, yeah, that was, you know, playing football on the streets, on the green, we used to call it, which was just a patch of grass. But when you first started, what was it like getting into football as a woman? Um, incredibly hard. For starters, in school, um, I was lucky my school team let me play for the boys team. So could girls not actually play no. in school? No. Right, okay. Um, but they let me play in the boys team. But there were no girls team around my area. It took me until I was 11 or 12 to join um, Thornhill oh, Girls. Goodness. Football was my life. I'd wake up in football. I'd always have, you know, my older brother's hand-me-downs. I'd be wearing his top, his boots. Um, so yeah, now seeing how far football's come, it's, it's amazing. Do you think that the girls coming through are getting bigger opportunities? And how important is it the fact that they're getting to play football for, for the girls team in school, how important it is that they're seeing seeing women out there who are playing football? I mean, it's incredible. Like, all you've got to do, like, on my doorstep now, you've got the opportunity to play for Cardiff City and 16s. For me, that was unheard of. There was a, a Cardiff Academy, but there wasn't 
playing officially for the Bluebirds. We've got the 19s, you've got Swansea doing it, Ponty have a 19s, and there's that pathway. And then in school, you know, you've got girls' football clubs, and it's just making young girls think, you know, if I want to try this sport, whether yeah. it's for fun, whether you want to pursue it further down the line, it's just incredible, and we're getting all these girls active and giving them the opportunity to choose, yes, football's for me, mm -hmm. and they've got that avenue. We should say, as well as being a Cardiff City women's player, it's not your only priority. You are, as you've mentioned, a school teacher, full-time school teacher. Yes. What is that like, balancing playing football and being a teacher? Um, I'm not going to lie, you can probably tell by the bags under my eyes that it is hard, but it's um, so rewarding. It's doable. Um, you just got to find the right balance. So it is tricky. We train three times a week. So I prioritise, you know, a Monday is when I do my work and sometimes on a Friday or if I can leave school, I go for a coffee and do a bit of work. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just finding that balance and planning when can I do it. But I mean, it's worth it. I love my school, the staff, the children are so friendly and it's nice to share my football passion with them as well because they're all so supportive. Right, should we whip another tune on? Yeah, let's get it on. Right, okay, this one. Love this song. Then I would hit him in a heartbeat now. You could sing her. Oh, no, don't. Very good. I'm not. I will go for it. I can go Whitney style on you if you really need, but Very people will good. have to pay for me to sing, you know? Okay, all right. It's... Come on then. What do you think of this car? It's not too bad. It's really good. Obviously, it's automatic. It's electric, which I which good. forgot about temporarily. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Really, I am looking for a new car, so... Me too. Possibility. I mean, I'm a massive David Attenborough fan, so electric all the way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What is your sort of goals for the future, for you personally and for the women's game in general? Oh, so for me personally, um, you know, playing well for Cardiff for the next, you know, until my legs give way, until I, you know, got a couple of grey hairs. <laughs> you're still young, you're still um, young. But yeah, just to be playing well for Cardiff and win more trophies, um, hopefully go to Champions League with Cardiff. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. That would be incredible. I would love the opportunity to be involved back with the international team, Wales women. I did achieve a senior cap back in 2015 when I was a bit younger. But yeah, it would be a privilege and I'd be so proud if I could get back in there. But again, because women's football is coming on so long, the talent is incredible. So, you know, I'll enjoy sitting back watching and supporting them. There's a lot of the younger age groups of Wales in in the Cardiff City setup, what advice would you give to those sort of young players coming through, and the fact that you know you've been there, you've done it, you know you're a bit older. What would you say to them? They're just starting off. I'd say don't put pressure on yourself. Enjoy it, um, and don't think just because you're not in it now you won't be in it. Because for me, my international journey started when I was 16. I was never in any camps or anything like that. Um, I received an email after the blue, uh, picked to go on a Lithuania um, and 17s camp. And then in the September, I was then picked for the 19s. And then the following March, and then got my senior cap all in under a year. You can achieve anything if you keep believing, but you know, focus on you. Don't worry what is happening around you. Be grateful, be there for everybody else, but enjoy it as well. If you don't enjoy it, you know, you're not going to work as hard, but don't put pressure on yourself because the opportunities are incredible right now. How good is it the fact that, you know, you've supported Cardiff City since you were a kid, you worked in the shop and now, you know, you're representing them, you're playing for them, you're winning, scoring goals, you're winning awards. What is that like? It must be a dream. It is. I mean, the other day I was looking um, through photos and there was one of me at the Cardiff City soccer scores back in the day. Um, when like Joe Ledley and that came and you know it's looking like it's like I've done a full circle I was there meeting the players which again was incredible you think at that age wow it's the best thing mm -hmm. um, and then I worked in the shop I've been everywhere you name it I've probably been there to do with Cardiff but it's great I mean it means a lot to me and I can imagine it means a lot to other people to play for Cardiff but for me it's just that extra special bit because there's a story behind it there's a history behind it. I've been right through, and you, I love Cardiff. Um, yeah, so it's born been, here, lived here all your life. It's been a full journey for me and for my family as well. So we're approaching where you yes. grew up. Oh my goodness, this is a throwback. Jeez. But yeah, I, I remember some of these streets for sure. <laughs> Playing curbsy <laughs> on the curbs. 
I remember coming down here, Splot Swim Pool. You see my swimming over there. Oh gosh, this brings back some memories. Used to play down here in this park. Yeah, my dad would just boot the ball and I'd, you know, practice my first touch, practice a shot to get him running around. And he'd be on the sofa in the afternoon. I think I used to run ragged, well. yeah. <laughs> Poor old Rob. Well, the women's football team yeah. are just starting. That's good to see already that positive is. signs coming back. That is, that nice is good, to see. isn't it? So now we will head towards taking his training. Oh, Ocean brilliant. Park. Thank you for the lift. Appreciate no, that. And this, I might say to the girls, see my new whip. <laughs> not bad, is it? You've got a chauffeur. <laughs> I'll, <be calm. laughs> yeah. I'll be like, oh, I'm picking it up after I am. <laughs> right, on the way to training, so we want to get you in the right mindset. Okay. Do you want to play your final right. song for us? Okay. And why this one? Right, this song, you know, it's just that chill song. Everybody loves this song. So, are you okay. ready? What would you say is the sort of most memorable highlight as a player and as a fan that you've had at Cardiff City? Oh, well, winning Adran Player of the Year was a pinnacle in my career. Um, to think that like other people thought I was playing really well, as well, and getting that recognition, which was lovely. But um, as a family, I think getting um players player for cardiff is our club um and receiving that in front of the men in front of fans was just a real highlight moment so yeah, yeah does that does that mean a lot the fact that it's the players player yeah i mean because it came from the girls as well um i was so shocked um but it was really nice to know that they thought i was playing really well um which is always nice to know um but again i can't thank the girls enough because without them, I wouldn't have played as well as I did. You can put a ball in, but they've got to finish it. So, yeah, credit to the girls. Do you think that you'll continue to play football until the point where you don't enjoy it, or do you think that you always will and like you'll just have to retire when <laughs> it gets to the time? I'll probably be playing walking football. Um, but yeah, I think I just love the game so much and I've been involved. Like, watching the men, I love it. Playing it, I love it. When I went to Peterborough away with my brother and Aidan Flint scored that uh, header like last minute and we just went crazy and I was there with my uh, top and he was just amazing. My brother, I, I didn't see him, he disappeared. But it was just nice to see um, that, you know, I play but I'm a big fan as well. Yes, yeah, so you still go and watch the, the men? Play. Oh yeah, of course. Me, my dad and my brothers, we used to travel everywhere. We've been to Derby, been to Reading, Doncaster, playoff final. Um, you name it, we've been there. Pulling up to training. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for my coffee as well. I'm definitely You're ready, ready to now. go. Yeah, you yeah, listen I'm to ready. your tunes, you've had yeah. your coffee. Good I might have go. to take Brian with me. The girls are going to You're going to steal him? Yeah. Good Amazing. luck with training and good luck at the weekend for the game. Thank you very much. Thank you for the coffee as well. Nice to see you. And you. See you later, Brian. Ta ra. See you soon. Bye bye.